What we do here is go back, 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 back. Hey yo, what's going on everyone? Nathan here. So over the past two semesters, I've been frequently switching back between Notability and GoodNotes 5 to see which one's truly the best note-taking app for the iPad. So back in November of last year, Notability had this huge update and solved a lot of the issues and areas that were lacking behind GoodNotes 5 and I wanted to see them for myself. So after using Notability for the past four months, essentially every single day, I have come up with five time-saving tips to help you speed up your note-taking process and to help you really make the most out of your Notability app. And so if you're ready for those five tips, let's get into it. So tip number one is utilizing Notability's new organizational system with their stackable dividers and subjects. So hopping over to the iPad here, we're going to launch Notability and it's gonna bring you to like your gallery of all the notes that you do have. So to create a new divider or subject, you're gonna to go to the top left hand corner and you're gonna press the plus button. So essentially what these are, subjects are areas where you keep specific notes into to help organize them. And then dividers themselves are expandable organizational layers that you can put other dividers or other subjects into. So here, let me show you a quick example. So if you come over here to my junior year spring, open that up, you're gonna be able to see all the classes that I took, each of them in their own divider. So junior year spring is a divider, MEE 332 is a divider, and so on. You can open up these dividers within themselves, and then now I have my subjects, which are color coordinated within each divider. So I have them broken down into lectures, worksheets, labs. Some of them have recitations. It all depends on the class and what is necessary for it. And then if you click on a subject itself, to the right here, it opens up all of the notes that you have within the subject. So beforehand, you weren't able to like put dividers into dividers. So if I open up all these classes right here, this is sort of of what my whole like notability note section looked like before the update. And as you can tell, it would get pretty dense pretty quick and I really didn't like that about it. But now since you can just stack and close these dividers, it helps with organization so much and I highly recommend that everyone uses them more so like this. So now I'm gonna quickly show you how to put a divider into another one. So let's go here, add the plus button, select divider. I'm going to name it, you know, YouTube. So now you're going to hold it by the triangle and you're gonna be able to drag it down and you can see where this blue line lines up with whatever section it's about to go into. So let's put it into junior year spring. So now it's like tabbed in from the junior year and then when you close junior year, it closes with it and it really just helps keep things extremely neat. So now tip number two is to use the favorites toolbar. And this is honestly a huge reason why I keep coming back to Notability because GoodNotes 5 just doesn't have this feature. So let's go into a note real quick so I can show you what this favorites toolbar is. So as you can see at the top of the screen here, I have this quick use menu full of different pens, erasers, and highlighters, each with their own specified settings for them. So what's cool about this is that you're able to move it around with this little bar right here. You can put it on any edge of the screen that you want. So if you're a lefty, you can move it over to the right so it's out of your way. I usually leave it right here at the top. And you can also get rid of it by pressing the little X on the other side of it. And where it goes is it's pre-saved in the bottom left-hand corner with the little star icon. And to bring it back up, you just tap on that and it goes back to where you last had it. So to add a new tool to this favorites bar, you're going to go to whatever sort of writing utensil you want. So I'm gonna go to a pen right here, double press on that and you can set up however you want it. The thickness, let's go with that one. I usually use just like the first um, pen stroke style as it's just kind of like the neatest, keeps everything very symmetrical. And let's go with this little lavender color. So you're gonna press on it again, and then you're gonna press down at the bottom of this little drop down menu, the star with a plus in it that says favorites. And as you can see, it just put it right there at the end of my favorites bar. You can move it however or wherever you want within the menu bar and it's just super simple and easy to use. Very similar to how you add one, to get rid of one, you're going to double press on it in the drop down menu of the toolbar 
at the bottom right here, you can press remove or you can change up what the settings are for this specific writing pen. So you can make the line thicker, give that a go, go back to it, double press, make it a little thinner. So it's just, it's super handy. I use it all the time, as you can see, like by taking a look at these notes right here, I use so many different colors to like make notes for myself in the future when I go back and study problems. And it really just helps with the flow of my note taking as I don't always have to consistently go back through, find a color, change the size of it. They're all right there, pre-saved for me. And this is a huge time saver for me. So the third tip is using the lasso tool at the top of the menu bar. So this one is the second from the end and it's like the little squiggly icon. You can double click on that and you can change between either a freehand draw mode or a square mode. So this is what the freehand draw looks like. You can literally circle whatever. And the square mode looks like this. So the first thing that you're gonna notice when you actually lasso some text that you want, you're gonna be able to move it by dragging on the screen or you can increase its size or decrease its size by pinching on the screen either in or out. Where the lasso tool really shines though is when you enclose whatever piece of text that you want and then you tap with your finger on the inside of that. And it gives you eight different options that allow you to edit this note. It can really save a lot of time when you're in class struggling to keep along or if you're just trying to save time while note taking itself. So the first option it gives you is style and basically what this is is anything within this enclosed area, you can now change the pen settings of. So right here, click on style, you can change the color of it. So you can see, change from a blue to a pink to a purple. And you can also change the thickness. <laughs> that, looks, that looks pretty ugly. You can change it to however you like, that also looks super ugly. So I kind of like that. So yeah, that's style. So like if you wrote something beforehand in just regular black ink, and then you wanna change it to like a red color so it stands out more, you can use this style function to help you do that instead of just rewriting the text itself. So the second option is duplicate. And I use this one all the time. It helps me just speed through notes so quick. So just like what it says, when you press duplicate, you get a second one of it that you can move around. And when I use this for all the time, so since I'm an engineering student, I'm always drawing graphs and diagrams of different things. So right, let me go through real quick. Oh, look at this iron I made. This iron is... <laughs> Beautiful, just for like in-class note-taking. Honestly, put a little too much time into it. So right here, for example, let's say like I wanted this iron real quick. I'm going to press duplicate. And now instead of redrawing this whole diagram with all like the time, the temperature, the heat convection rate, and I can just move it onto whatever page I want. So instead of scrolling back up and down to look at the same diagram over and over again, just duplicate it, move it down to the next page, and I have it right there for more room for me to finish the problem. And this has been a huge time saver for me and it's a great way. So now tip number four is using note switcher. So I feel like not many people know about this cause like there's no direct way to see it, but it's so simple to use. So what you do is you swipe from left to right on the left side of the screen and it pulls up recent notes but you can also search any specific note that you have and you can press on it and it just quickly switches from one note to another and it's super seamless and can really just save you time from going through all your different dividers and subjects and trying to find it there. Just swipe up from the left, go back, there's the 33 again. So again, nice and quick and easy. But what I mostly use this for is to help me study. So what I do is I will pull up the note switcher and then you press on the ellipses or the three little dots near whatever note you want and it says view on left or view on right and so what you can do is here i'll put it on the left and it makes a split screen of these two notes and you can draw on them you can move them separately from each other and so what's really cool too is that you can even like copy and paste notes from one note here let me do it copy and then you can paste them onto the other note and then what's really cool about this as well is Moving the slider in the middle allows you to adjust the size of each page itself. So I usually leave the left one a lot smaller than the right one. I'm a righty, so just writing on the right side, it gives me more room, more freedom to work with. And then on the left, I will have either past homeworks or examples or review sheets. 
and on the right will just be like a blank one or my current review sheet. And then I will go through specific problems and without cheating and seeing the whole problem, I can slowly like move through the problem, try to work on it myself and just use that as a guide. And then if I get caught up, I can scroll down, use that. Or what you can do, like I said earlier, use the lasso tool, copy this diagram right here, and then go to this side, paste, and it's all right there. I don't have to waste time redrawing this, rewriting down all the equations. It's right there, and now I'm ready to work on this problem. And it really just helps mainstream my studying process. And I think that this note switcher feature is a game changer for this app. And then tip number five is utilizing the camera feature in Notability to really help you speed up your note taking as well. So to get to this, you're gonna press the plus icon at the top right, and then you go down to the second one, which says camera, and then you can go ahead and take a picture of whatever you need. So what I typically use this for is for graphs or different things within lectures while I'm at home, and I'm not like super far away from like the blackboard or whatever my professor's using, and just to help me like get the information down quick, and then to start working on the problem, working on the theory behind it, instead of sitting there just copying down different types of tables. So if you look at this note right here, this is for my engineering economics class, and there's just a whole bunch of like large tables with numbers in it that really don't help me understand the problem at all. It's just the problem itself. So instead of sitting here spending time like writing down these long problems with parts A, B, C, D, and all these tables and figures, I will literally just take my iPad go to the camera setting, take a picture of it, and then to help clean it up a little bit, because I know like this isn't the prettiest, I'm not saying it is, I actually think this is kind of ugly, but for studying and homework reasons, like it is good enough, and for me, saving time anywhere I can is a huge help. So what I was saying before is to help clean it up, you go to this crop setting right here, and you can see my original picture. It is literally just like most of my laptop screen itself, but you can crop it down to right here. Right here, you just drag these blue corners, crop it down to just the problem itself, and then you press on the blue check mark, and there you go. So again, I feel like not many people use this feature, and I think it's just a huge time saver. So I highly recommend you starting to incorporate this into your note taking, and I promise you, your note taking and studying will go by a lot quicker. And so those are the five tips I have for taking notes quicker with Notability. I'm sure a couple of you know a few of these things, but probably not everyone knows all five of them. And I truly believe that if you incorporate these into your own note-taking processes, you will fly by with notes and studying, and it'll just help you save more time in the end. And so that's gonna be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, or if you learned something new, then please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe, as I don't wanna miss anything else I have in the future. And with that being said, have a great day, everyone, and cheers. Thank you.